Hello everyone and welcome to another stage preview here of the Welta Spania 2024 and today we're looking at the 12th stage which is a challenging 137.4 kilometer route that begins in the historic city of Ulenz and culminates at the ski station in Cabeza de Manzaneda. Ulenz nestled in the heart of Galicia is renowned for its thermal springs drawing visitors to the healing waters for centuries worldwide. The stage's style is set against the backdrop of one of the city's most famous spas, highlighting the area's rich traditions of wellness. This marks the 20th time La Vuelta has visited Orient, with its last occasion being in 2020 when Tim Wellens was the victor on that day from a breakaway. The riders depart Orens, heading eastwards embarking on a lumpy day filled with rolling terrain. While the hills may not be individually daunting, their culminating effect will gradually wear down the peloton. The route offers little respite with several uphill drags that sap energy ahead of the decisive climb. After winding roads through the rugged Galician landscape, the race arrives at the foot of the finishing climb of the Estación de Montaña Manzaneda. The stage is fairly undulating but no castorized climbs, but there are several inclines that aren't castorized. It's a strange stage and it's weird that the organizers didn't think that they were going to put any castorized climbs in here. We do have an intermediate sprint just after the 100 kilometer mark so that is something to look out for as well but well and truly not something that is motivating a breakaway to go away at this point the final ascent however is a 22 kilometer grind to the ski station at the summit of the cabeza de manzaneda with an average gradient of 6.4 percent the climb is a steady test of endurance but the middle sections are truly what test the riders around halfway up the gradient spikes up 10.2 percent the last 15 kilometers are uh fairly challenging profile with gradients going up to 12 percent but for the most part hovering below the eight percent the beginning four kilometers are fairly steady with the highest gradient achieving 6.3 percent then the road after four kilometers kicks up to eight percent and then it levels off once more not getting gradients more than about five percent then eight kilometers into the climb it kicks up again to 6.3 then 6.7 but then levels off somewhat again going below six percent until 13 kilometers into the climb and this is where the climb gets a bit more challenging moving up into seven percent eight percent and that is also where we have the 12 percent section in terms of the profile itself the climb has several windy turns and a fairly flat finish inside the last few hundred meters but the final five kilometers will certainly be a challenging one for the riders. The Manzanera ski station has only featured once before in the Vuelta Espana back in 2011 when the French climber David Moncoutier, who several times won the mountains classification in the race, powered to victory, finishing over a minute ahead of the breakaway companions of Benoit Inchausti and Luis Leon Sanchez to take the victory. This year, the stage is likely to see a fierce battle on that final climb with time bonuses available of 10, 6 and 4 for the first three riders who cross the line as well. Additionally, that intermediate sprint offers bonus seconds as well as the riders tackle the long drag to the finish at the ski station. The combination of altitude gradients and the fatigue from the preceding climbs promises to make stage 12 potentially a pivotal stage for the riders. But anyways, in terms of predictions, this is of course a very interesting stage and it probably would suit the likes of Primus Roglic, but Red Bull Bora Hansgrohe haven't been looking like the most solid team and no team has really been willing to lay down the gauntlet for the other teams as well. So it really is an open book in terms of who will take charge and maybe a breakaway will even get up the road once more or even Adam Yates who is back in the GC picture could well and truly do something here it would be good to see but I think Primoz Roglic will definitely be eager to chip away 
at that Ben O'Connor lead if it isn't left for a breakaway. The breakaway certainly could be eyeing this up with bigger challenges to come for the riders as well. And perhaps we could see some of the smaller teams gallop away and get a victory. I would like to see Matthias Skilmos Jensen take the victory, of course, being a Dane. But is that a reality? We could even see some of the French teams try and get their French riders up to win here. But the Catalan AD2R, of course, going to be all hands on deck for Ben O'Connor. And he'll try and preserve that lead as much as possible. But UAT Mamrats certainly have plenty of things that they could look to do. Ineos Grenadiers as well haven't been completely on the ball. And Mikal Lande, who is aiming for a podium in this year's Vuelta España, certainly needs to make sure that he gains some ground on some of the better time trial lists because we have that final time trial in Madrid. But anyways, with that, that's basically it for this video. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel here on the Cycling Dane Extra. And of course, as always, thank you for watching and I will see you around.